Depp's recent victory in the Virginia trial was meant to be a celebration for men too, and generally for victims of domestic violence. Instead, it seems to have started a war between mainstream media and social media. The pro-amber mainstream waved the flag of belief all women, despite any counter evidence, it seems, and claims that the verdict signifies the death of Me Too and a call for the death of solidarity with female victims. Social media, in turn, waved the flag of men too, demand justice for false accusations, and call for the death of solidarity with female victims. Confused? Let me paint you an argument. Since the verdict in Depp v. Heard, Heard and her legal team have released several statements mourning the deaths of Me Too, women's rights, and apparently freedom of speech, as if the First Amendment was the green light for perjury on behalf of the Constitution. The mainstream media, too, took this trial as an opportunity to misrepresent, once again, crucial social movements and, well, reality. Instead of seeing this verdict as a turning point for victims, regardless of gender, they decided to gaslight the shit out of everyone by claiming that a man proving in a court of law that he was abused by a woman could only mean that women's rights are officially cancelled and it won't be long until we're all just walking uteruses equipped with a leash and muzzle. Social media was of course quick to notice this lunacy and as social media does, was not about to let it slide. The backlash against mainstream media's backing of herd and making the verdict about sexism instead of the truth was at first concerned with advocating for victims of abuse regardless of gender and with standing against the notion that all women and only women have to be believed regardless of how little foundation their claims were found to have in a court of law just because of their gender. In essence, the backlash was very much concerned most of all with the believe all women narrative the mainstream media was pushing down everyone's throats. But in reality, if you really think about it, mainstream media's main narrative, and also the one of Amber Heard herself and by extension her legal team, is not necessarily that women like Amber Heard have to be believed because they are inherently truthful, or more accurately, that Amber Heard is telling the truth. It's that if she were telling the truth, and this this is how the world reacted, what a tragedy that would be for female victims and the Me Too movement. While the difference between the two doesn't seem important at all, it very much is, because it allows mainstream media and Amber Heard and her team to completely skip over the many discrepancies in her story and the fact that she was found by a court of law to be fabricating her claims of abuse. It's not important if she was being truthful, it's that the world reacted with such force against a woman claiming abuse. Now, I I'd say most people would agree that if a person was telling the truth, it would be a tragedy for the world to react the way they have been reacting to Amber Heard specifically. But it's manipulative to make that argument because Amber Heard was proven to lie, not just in the court of public opinion, but in court court as in the legal system, by a jury deciding that three out of the three statements that Amber Heard was being sued for were done with actual malice, which is the legal term for spoken despite of knowing the statement isn't true and with a disregard for the truth of the statement. AKA, the statements were lies. Heard's claims of abuse were found to be untrue in a court of law. And while I guess you can make it about the justice system being broken and innocent people being sentenced all the time and guilty people being set free, this isn't what the mainstream media are saying when they are denouncing the Depp versus Heard verdict. This is not about the truth. As this article actually states in the title, weirdly enough, this is about the narrative. And the truth is meaningless when it comes to the narrative, a fact that can be seen in articles like this equating this verdict to the actually horrifying threats against female bodily autonomy via criminalizing abortions. It's basically saying going against a woman who was proven to lie is the same as stripping a human being away from its right for bodily autonomy. The narrative isn't how she was proven to lie, it's why do they think she's lying? Because she's a woman. And why? 
Why? Because Me Too has finally come to an end. And why? Because once again, men have the final word and women are going back to losing all rights. It's back to being walking wombs with no freedom of speech, apparently. This is how they were able to twist something that has nothing to do with gender biases and everything to do with the truth to become all about gender biases and nothing to do with the truth and most ironically, by being ridiculously gender biased themselves and completely unconcerned with reality. Of course, any middle schooler with any common sense can see through this because regardless of sexism and Me Too, women as human beings are capable of lying and manipulating and gaslighting and abusing and being greedy and being power hungry. Saying that women are always helpless victims actually goes against the very basic feminist notion that women are capable of anything a man is. And as I said in my last video, the Me Too movement, important as it was, and it was, fit in perfectly with the very gender bias that feminism has been fighting against in the past century. The Me Too movement sought to empower victims of abuse, but the mainstream media only embraced the version of Me Too that stood by the infantilization of women, believing all women because all women must be the weaker partner in a male-female dynamic, believe all women because all men are more powerful. Me Too was initially about believing victims, regardless of gender, considering their claims without discarding them with no further inquiry. It was never about believing self-proclaimed victims in spite of contrary evidence. It was never about believing all who claimed abuse when they were shown to perpetuate the abuse themselves. And it certainly was never about believing all women. The Me Too movement made perfect sense, it still does, and anyone with half a brain can see why. The problem is it's being appropriated and caricatured by different people for different agendas. It was distorted by the mainstream media to capitalize on and maintain a gender biased narrative, and it was distorted by anti-feminist sections of social politics and commentary to make feminism, and by extension women, a joke. And it was appropriated by the likes of Amber Heard to shield herself from the consequences of her actions. So social media went full force against both mainstream media and Amber Heard as they both represent a very hurtful distortion of reality that just doesn't seem to want to face itself and admit its wrongs, and in the process want to gaslight everyone. Social media took a very clear and important stand that it's not sexism that makes us not believe Amber Heard, but cold hard facts and evidence presented properly in a court of law. In other words, social media is saying we don't believe Amber because she's proven to be a liar, not because she's a woman. And it's not not social media that has taken several steps back on the social progress made by the Me Too era. It's not social media that is making female victims less trustworthy. It is misheard herself and the apparatuses that religiously back her up that shit on the beds of every victim. Every real victim, and not just female. In the beginning, social media had it right until it was gaslit so thoroughly that now it seems that we lost track of our own argument, our real, valid, and important argument in this fight. Now it seems that we got so confused by being called misogynist, by being blamed for the death of Me Too, and by supposedly calling for the relentless doubting of all women that we became misogynist? Who call for the death of Me Too and for the relentless doubting of all women? Uh... <laughs> How the fuck did this happen? My theory is that we got so gung-ho about dividing the world into herd supporters and Depp supporters, labeling the former as delusional or biased and the latter logical thinkers, that we kind of forgot how easily the Depp versus herd case can be distorted into an anti-Me Too argument for purposes that have nothing to do with the truth of the case. I very recently joined Reddit for the first time, having had no real understanding of what it is or how it worked before, that a brand new new world of debates, opinions, and conversations opened up before me and I saw for the first time with my very own eyes how kooky we as people can be when we find an echo chamber. I came across many subreddits that are hardcore pro dep yet seem to have a very questionable grip on reality and a very weird interpretation of the trial that I was following closely. Things that made Depp look quite bad in the trial, in my eyes at least, were celebrated and portrayed as cool, but what I noticed to be really 
really fucked is that Amber wasn't criticized for making herself the face of a movement that has nothing to do with her, nor for making abuse claims against someone that she was proven to abuse herself, she was criticized as the face of that movement. Meaning, the whole movement is suddenly seen as a lie, instead of Amber Heard being a liar for including herself in a legitimate movement. The war against mainstream media, Amber Heard, and their manipulation of a legitimate movement via gaslighting the non-believers had actually become a war against me too. Now, let me be clear that I'm aware that at this time, this is a fringe sector of social media that I notice become more and more vocal and convincing. I was just interested in understanding why it's convincing and came to the conclusion that it's convincing not because it's right, but because much like mainstream media is using women's rights to push their gender biases, so do incels seem to use justice for Johnny and the men too to push their very own gender biases. What worries me is that both mainstream media and those fringe sectors of social media will manage to strip Me Too of all its meanings and harm victims of abuse in their journey for justice. While many female victims of abuse stood by Johnny before, throughout, and after the trial because they recognized him as a victim himself, it's also important to mention the fact that the way this trial was mocked with memes and TikTok trends was incredibly harmful to victims who already were afraid to speak up and now are preemptively bunched up with Amber Heard by both mainstream and and social media. Depp's win has the potential for tremendous meaning for victims of abuse, regardless of gender. It is a statement that if we listen to the fact the truth will prevail and justice can be achieved, it should be a celebration of both men too and me too. It should empower victims to speak up and not make it harder for them to. I hope we can remember this and also remember not to fall into the trap set so accurately by herd and mainstream media. Depp's win is not not the death of Me Too. It's the enforcement of it. It is a statement that an abuse of power will have its consequences. It is a statement that victims and their stories cannot be ignored or discarded for a more convenient gender-biased narrative. Thank you very much for making it to the end of this video. I really hope that you found the topic interesting and that you enjoyed the painting process of this piece. Let me know your opinions in the comment section down below. Also, feel free to give any interpretations for the painting. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Dislike the video if you didn't enjoy it. <laughs> Consider subscribing to my channel if you enjoy this type of content. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.